This episode of the Friends of Beauty podcast is sponsored by Buddy Love Delights. Buddy Love Delights is a health and wellness company that specializes in the cannabis infusion of drinks, foods, and desserts. They provide CBD products for clients strictly looking for the healing and medicinal qualities of the hemp plant. Additionally, they also provide THC for clients who desire a top-notch euphoric experience with cannabis. And all I'm going to say is, you got to try the lemonades, okay? Buddy Love Delights products are all natural, made with organic ingredients, and most importantly, made with love. You can contact Buddy Love Delights directly via a phone call or text at 202-471-9838 or send them a DM on Instagram at Buddy Love Delights. Make sure to follow Buddy Love Delights to keep up with new products and upcoming events. So now let's go ahead and jump into the episode. If you fundamentally understand exactly how much it costs for you to acquire a client, you essentially have a money printing machine. It's like spending $1 to make $3. Mm -hmm. And so I was just so fascinated by that. And so long story short, um, that, that that startup, the, the lead investor pulled out. I got fired. Um, I tried to start like nine or 10 other businesses. I was in like affiliate marketing. I tried to sell things online with e-commerce. I was in like a weird MLM at that point. So I, I literally tried everything. Well, what I started to realize is that like marketing, it was the same concept across every single industry. If you're able to understand fundamentally why people buy and how to make them buy it, you could essentially be successful in any industry. Welcome to the Friends in Beauty podcast, a safe space for ambitious beauty industry creatives to have real talk, get real answers and practical tools to grow their businesses. My name is Aquia Robinson, and I'm a makeup artist, beauty educator, and the creator of Friends in Beauty. I created Friends in Beauty to support like-minded creatives, just like you, on their quest to connect, network, and build genuine relationships within the beauty community. Join me every week as me and my special guests reveal the keys to success and longevity in the beauty industry, and most importantly, have fun while doing it. You ready? Hey, what's up? It's your best friend in beauty, Aquia Robinson. Welcome back to another episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast. I am so happy to have you here with me, and I hope you're listening to this episode in high spirits and in good health. If you are a friend in beauty, I welcome you to join the Friends in Beauty Facebook community. If you're looking for a community of like-minded, ambitious friends in beauty to virtually connect with, network, and share resources, then click the link down below in the show description to join our community. And I'll be there to welcome you with open arms. Also, follow Friends in Beauty on all social media platforms at Friends in Beauty. What I like to do is something called the Friends in Beauty Friday feature, where every Friday I spotlight a different friend in beauty and their accomplishments. So no matter how big or small you think it is, I want to shout you out. I want to send you some good vibes. So all you have to do is use the hashtag FIB Friday feature, tag Friends in Beauty on something that you have accomplished, and I'll share it with the community. Additionally, the Friends and Beauty podcast is available on several platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google, YouTube, you name it. And whatever platform you are listening from right now, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into the Friends and Beauty podcast. I truly appreciate you so much. And I would love it even further if you took the time to leave a five-star rating, a review, a comment, a like, a share, a subscribe, a something to let me know how you feel about the Friends and Beauty podcast. I would absolutely love it. And also, I have to tell you that you should join the Friends and Beauty mailing list tribe if you haven't already because they are the first to know about all things Friends and Beauty and I send out different business resources, tips, and advice throughout the week. So if that's something that you're interested in, the link for that will be in the description as well. And last but not least, the most important thing is to share the Friends and Beauty podcast with your other friends in beauty, your family, your friends, anybody that you think could benefit from the information that is being shared Share, share, share a way to help me grow the Friends and Beauty community. Now, on this episode of the Friends and Beauty podcast, I welcome Danny Tran, the CEO and founder of High Stoke Media to the Friends and Beauty guest chair. Danny founded High Stoke Media in 2018 due to the fact that no proven marketing system existed in the luxury beauty space. After watching thousands of permanent makeup businesses struggle with consistent clientele and outdated marketing tactics, High Stoke Media's mission was to find a proven solution to help artists around the world not only survive, but thrive. With a global team of 20 plus, High Stoke Media has recently been named the number one luxury PMU growth partner by helping their clients secure 80 plus booked appointments in just three months, guaranteed. 
I had such an amazing time chatting with Danny. He is such a wealth of information and just an overall boss. In this interview, Danny shares what exactly High Stoke Media does for its clients to help them generate clients and sales on autopilot, the outdated marketing techniques that's keeping your business from growing, tips on nurturing your client through the sales process, tips on scaling your business, insight on running a successful million dollar company and team, and a six figure and million dollar game plan that will completely change your outlook and approach to your business so this interview is so good like when I say it's good like it is so good and I don't want to hold you back any longer so grab a pen and paper let's take some notes and let's go ahead and jump into this chat with Danny Tran and if you prefer to watch the interview then tune in on YouTube enjoy welcome to the friends and beauty podcast Danny (laughs) glad to be here thank you so much for inviting me very very excited Absolutely. I'm really excited to have you because um, what you do for people in the beauty industry specifically is really exciting to me. I'm a really um, techie person. So anytime it comes to that down to like systems and operations and stuff like that, I love I love stuff like that. So I'm really excited to learn more about high stuff media. Oh, we're, we're definitely going to geek out today then. <laughs> <laughs> Usually these podcasts, we, we talk about, you know, like the bare bones of basics, but yeah, I am 100% down to talk about like the nitty gritty details, tech, ops, systems, marketing, advertising. So very, very excited. Yes, I love it. But before we get started, I love to start off with icebreakers just to get us warmed up and so that the Friends of Beauty audience can get to know you a little bit outside of business. All right. Beauty. Yes. So first one, just give us three random facts about you. Three random facts. Okay. Um, Number one, I just moved to Las Vegas from California. I was born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, Number two, my career actually started in financial technology and banking. So it's kind of crazy how we went from there to luxury beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, Number three, I know you just told me you had a kitten. I am deathly allergic to cats and tequila. (laughs) Tequila. (laughs) Mezcal. Mezcal specifically. I didn't even know this um, until like very recently, um, not very, so like a couple of years ago, I had like a margarita and, and I drank one and then my face just starts like puffing up and I lose my, my breath and I literally had to, almost went to the ER because of it. And then ever since then, I was like, let me try this out. And every time I drink Mezcal, same reaction. So oh my, my, gosh. my experience, I learned that I was allergic to not only cats, but tequila, which is funny. That is crazy because I love a margarita. So I would hate if I just all of a sudden developed a tequila allergy. I would be devastated. Love it. (laughs) Um, Next one, what do people always tell you that you're good at outside of what you do for business? What do people always tell me I'm good at? Um, if If I had to nail down a trait, I would probably say adaptability. I would say throughout my life, I've always been immersed into very new environments. Um, Maybe we can talk about this in a little bit, but I was a digital nomad for about two years. So I was living in different countries abroad in Asia and Europe and things like that. And every single time, it's like a brand new culture. It's a brand new environment. Um, So just being able to adapt to those situations and going going with the flow. And you know, you said to not tie back to business, but that has actually helped us a lot throughout business. You know, making those pivots, especially with COVID, the pandemic, making changes and rolling with the punches so I would definitely say adaptability that's awesome that is that's a great trait to have for sure love it (laughs) um when is the last time that you did something for the first time oh this fantastic question um are you familiar with the Vegas PMU conference the one that just happened like I am now okay so that was a, a conference and that was the very first time I ever spoke in front of a thousand plus people and I've done conferences and events before, but very like tight knit, intimate masterminds, like 50 to 100. Mm-hmm. And so speaking in front of a crowd of a thousand in like a large conference room, that was uh, a very like life changing moment for me because I've always been afraid of public speaking. I've suffered with anxiety and things like that growing up. And so that was like a very huge milestone in my life, being able to speak in front of that many people. That's dope. That's really exciting. You, can you see yourself doing it again? Like more? I- Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but I just feel like um, I have like, we have this moral responsibility now to showcase what is real marketing, what is real advertising, and really how to succeed in this industry. And so like the feedback that we've been getting has been, it's been super fulfilling. It's like, oh my God, like I loved your presentation. I'm so excited to go implement in my business and things like that, but like that now. And so the impact that we're able to have by able, by spreading our message to so many people all at once, it's been a very a gratifying thing for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yes. Um, if you can give a piece of advice to your younger self, maybe 
I don't know how old you are. You look you look young, but I'm gonna say like early twenties, Danny. I'm like, early early twenties, Danny. So like about a decade ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I would say stop stop caring about what other people think. You know, and and everything, right? Like what you're posting on social media, like how you're putting yourself out there as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. telling your friends or family that you're starting a business. And I, I genuinely believe that if I didn't care so much about what people thought about what I was doing in my journey, I would be able to move so much quicker. Focus mm -hmm. on yourself, staying on in your lane, and you'll be miles further than anybody else out there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, last one: If you were the CEO of High Stuff Media. Like what else could you see yourself doing or getting into right now? If I wasn't the CEO of High Stoke Media, mm -hmm. oh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> uh, probably, I don't know that this is like a podcast, but like I'm like fully tattooed. Like I have like a, a huge history in, with like rock music and I was in a few bands. I was even a DJ um, in college and we did like little tours and things like that. Uh -huh. So probably in the music industry for sure. Playing okay. guitar or something like that. Okay, I can see you yeah. rocking out. Yeah, you're so right now. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us yeah. because I really want to dive in and just learn more about you, about Danny. Like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background before it led to High Stoke Media? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to give you, you want the short version or the long version, Nakuya? <laughs> the medium version. Because I, like, I like the details. I like, the, you know, all the details. Love it. Okay, so um, like I mentioned earlier, um, I started my career like with marketing like over a decade ago, and it was in financial technology. So it was in like banking, um, creating like apps and credit cards and things like that for banks. And so it's very different from what I'm doing now. If someone were to tell me, hey, Danny, you would be in the microblading, the PMU industry like five, six years ago, I'm like, what in the world are you smoking, right? <laughs> it, it's just so different. Um, but I started with marketing and I've always been a very like numbers driven person. Like I, I really loved KPIs and metrics. And one of the things that I really um, appreciated was customer acquisition. Mm -hmm. So the fact of spending money to acquire a customer. Um, and I remember one day um, in, that, in the job, my superior was like, hey, Danny, if you fundamentally understand exactly how much it costs for you to acquire a client, you essentially have a money printing machine. It's like spending $1 to make $3. Mm -hmm. And so I was just so fascinated by that. And so long story short, um, that, the, that startup, the, the lead investor pulled out, I got fired. Um, I tried to start like nine or 10 other businesses. I was in like affiliate marketing. I tried to sell things online with e-commerce. I was in like a weird MLM at that point. So I, I literally tried everything. I was um, like me, <laughs> I've tried a little bit of everything too. <laughs> And, and it was something that I, I just fundamentally, like, I couldn't like get my, my head like behind or what, what I started to realize that like marketing, it was the same concept across every single industry. If you're able to understand fundamentally why people buy and how to make them buy it, you could essentially be successful in any industry. And so uh, about four years ago, High Stoke Media was born after all those failed businesses. I think High Stoke Media was a 10th one. Um, and then we were in all of these different industries. We were working with chiropractors, working with dentists, physical therapists, mm -hmm. private airplane tours, wineries, whoever needed marketing, we're like, let's do that. And then I remember about three years ago, I had a friend reach out to me and was like, hey, Danny, uh, do you do any marketing for microblading? And I was like, what in the world is microblading? Right. And I did some research and, I'm, and I was like, people are paying eight, $900 to get their brows tattooed yeah. on their face. And <laughs> it, it was such a, a weird thing for me at that time. And it was so new. And I know we're, we're probably going to dive into this. And then the more research that we did, the more that we realized that everyone in this industry didn't know what they were doing when it came to marketing, right? They were on like Groupon, they were on yellow pages, spending all this money on flyers and billboards and, and handouts. Right. Um, and so from there, we're like, huh, let's just niche down and see what happens for at least a year. And so we went all in in the PMU space. And then from there, it became like a snowball effect. And, you know, since then, I mean, as of today, we're at 31 team members in over eight countries. We've worked with over a thousand uh, beauty professionals all around the world. And it's just been such an amazing journey. I'm so grateful to be here. That is really exciting because especially I'm always fascinated about like when I meet people who aren't like in the beauty industry and then, no. but, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, you really never know what goes into an industry until like you're in it. So the fact that you like, dang, people are paying this much to get their brows done because you were more so like in the financial space, but it's so interesting that you really don't know what goes on in certain industries if you're not in there. 
Absolutely. And, and I think it's, it, that's one of the things that's probably led to our success too, because we brought a different perspective because mm -hmm. we didn't start in the beauty industry. We're like, okay, we know what it takes to succeed in finances and banking and in, in health and wellness and just bringing all those learnings to a new industry that has allowed us to stand out a little bit. Whereas everyone is sort of teaching the same thing. We mm -hmm. kind of come in from a very different like business savvy mindset. I love that because I always tell people, I think that's where I struggle the most. And I know that's where a lot of people struggle the most in the beauty industry is like, I, I don't lack ideas at all. Yeah. It's just, it's the marketing that gets me stuck. And I love what you said about, um, if you know, essentially like what makes people buy and why they yeah. buy, you could pretty much duplicate it in like whatever industry that you're in. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. Exactly. And you grew so fast. I have my notes Like you launched in January 18. In 2018, then, correct? Yeah, then by August 2020, you were officially a million dollar company. Like, yeah. why do you think that it grew so fast like that? Oh, this is a fantastic question. And um, I, this is uh, what we solved during that two year period is what so many beauty pros are, are, are struggling with right now. And it's 100% investing into a team. If you are a solopreneur, and that's what we call them, if you are working by yourself, doing your books, opening, closing your shops every day, doing all of the services, mopping the floors, like if you're doing everything, there's only so much of a quia to go around every single day. You only have 24 exactly. hours, not including the time that you need to sleep, eat, hang out with your family, kids, and things like that. And just because we invest into a team, we understood that if we could leverage other people's time, especially those who are you know on that same path as you, then you mm -hmm. can essentially have an un, uh, you can have a scalable business. The right. reason why most businesses are not scalable is because you yourself, and it's crazy to believe, think you yourself as a business owner and CEO, you are the bottleneck of the business when you are doing everything yourself. So um, to address that question, what led us to scale so quickly was that I got super burnt out. I was doing all the marketing myself, working with eight to ten different clients full time. And then I was like, I can't, I can't do this. So we hired more people. We hired account managers. We hired marketing managers. And the more that we grew the team, the larger that the business was able to grow. I love that. I love that. Um, it's all about scaling. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that was like the buzzword of like a few years now. It's like everybody is scaling. And in order to scale, you need a team. I love that because that's where I am now. I'm like a solopreneur. Exactly. I literally do everything by myself. And so let's put, let's put a deadline on that. When are you I'm, hiring your next team member? Soon, sometime in November, because I have okay. some things that I'm working on. Okay, but it's so just this always, month, yeah, it's just always so hard. You, I'm reaching out to you and I'm saying, hey, where's that team member? I'm going to hold you accountable. Please do. <laughs> it's just always hard to find like quality people. I've tried before, but it's just hard to find people who have like that same vision as you and everything. I think the cat wants to be a part of the, the podcast today. She's doing the most. But yeah, sure. um, what exactly like on the back end does High Stoke Media do for its clients primarily? Oh, okay, great question. Great question. So um, the way that I like to think about this is um, every business has three main functions, right? There's the marketing, attracting the right people mm -hmm. and getting them interested. There's the sales. You know, once you generate the interest, how do you close them to actually book an appointment and come in? And then there's the fulfillment, which is the actual services. So for us, we come in and handle all of your marketing and all of your sales. So okay. we do everything from run all of your ads. We generate you the leads, the opportunities, the interest, create you a sexy offer so that people are choosing you compared to their competitors down the street. And not only that, our team, we call them the, um, the PMU expert concierge team. We mm -hmm. will actually follow up on all of your leads and your DMs and call them, collect the deposits for you and fully book you out. So that all you have to do as a beauty professional is show up and do what you do best. So all the marketing, all the sales, complete done for you. You show up. Who are my new clients today? Thanks, High Stoke Media. That's it. That is amazing. And it's only for P like PMUAs. Like, can we get it for regular? As of right now, it's only for PMU just because it's a bit higher ticket. Okay. Um, you know, because we have like our whole team, we invest into it. Um, uh, we also have something, I mean, we can talk about this towards the end, but we do have something called like the High Stoke Academy, which mm -hmm. actually shows you how to do everything that we're doing, which it's, it's very, very exciting. Um, but yeah, like uh, to give you like a, a quick history recap or background on that is that when we first started as a marketing agency, all we did was the marketing, meaning we ran the ads and we got people to say like, hey, Akuya, like I want to come in. I'm super interested. But a lot of our clients were still not able to be successful because they were lacking the sales component. Meaning mm -hmm. they would rush the sale, 
they felt they were they were really weird about asking for the deposit. They didn't like hopping on the call. The, you know, people were interested and then they were a no show. And so the sales component was something that we tr really, really perfected over the past year, meaning mm -hmm. getting our team to actually come in and close those deals for you. Mm -hmm. So that I, no one really thinks about this, but sales is such a huge aspect in this industry that people tend to, you know, put on the back burner. They think they just need to have great photos and great services and that's it. But the sales is such a huge component that a lot of people forget. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think the industry is just changing so much where all of these, I feel like all of these aspects of running your business is just so much more apparent nowadays. Like you need yeah. marketing, like people just used to be, able, it's, it's just different with, with social media is not the same way that you would market your business prior to social media with flyers or just word of mouth or maybe radio advertisers. I don't know what people were doing. So it's a lot of adapting and yeah. just like pivoting and just always always adapting that's what you're good at though yeah, absolutely and i'm sure you've seen it just in the past let's say three to five years alone in the beauty space it's been so different there's been a lot of competition there's new tools that come out I mean, you know people are kind of like sick of seeing the same thing over and over um people who have seen like crazy and we have this a lot we had we have people coming to us saying like hey danny hey high stoke media i've been blowing up for the past three to five years but because of the pandemic and covid I'm all of a sudden struggling, like, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And so it just goes to show that the landscape changes so quickly. And if you're not innovating and adapting, like you will get left behind, especially in today's world. Absolutely. So tell me again, why PMUs? Like, is it because of the, the higher investment that people have to invest in their services that you think that like this, this was good for them to invest in your service? So yeah, PMU, we just felt like it was um, such a larger opportunity because it's such a new wave of, I guess it's like a new, sort of a new sub industry within the yeah. beauty industry, okay, nice right? Yeah. How much did you pay for that? This, so this one was free because- Ooh, yes. you, it looks really good. By the it way. was free <laughs> because my friend was uh, practicing. I think this, I think it's the powder brows. I have no idea. I just noticed she, I'd let her practice on me. So I was like, girl, do your thing. Oh, um, I love it. Yeah. She did, she did a great job. Thank you. We've had we had horror stories of people coming in for free, and um, so no, that that's amazing. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, there's just so much opportunity, and we see within the next couple of years, um, the PMU industry just absolutely exploding, right? Like just within the brows alone, there's so many new techniques, like nano brows. Um, there, there's all these new things, and then every time that a, a new service comes up, I'm always in awe. Like I was so surprised people were getting their lips tattooed when it first came out. Right, and then liner tattooed, and then yeah. not like scalp marker pigmentation for for um, the head, and so it is. It's just constantly. I, I like it because the industry is constantly innovating, which mm -hmm. allows us to constantly innovate. Versus like a very old school um, uh, industry, like we were used to working in, like chiropractors. It gets very like boring and very gray and vanilla and black and white. Um, and but yeah, like this industry, it's so fun. We love hanging out with our clients. Like it's one of the best industries to not only have a good time with, but make a lot of money together and have a lot of impact. Um, yeah. Quick side note, like we took when we had the conference, we took our clients to the club. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't even know you guys partied like that. that is <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of opportunity, and we just find a lot of passion within this industry too. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, what are some of the outdated marketing techniques, I guess, that you saw some of your clients utilizing before they hired you and your team? Great question. So I would say number one would be discount sites. So so things like Groupon. Um, I know there's, I can't remember the top of my head, but the, the sites like Groupon. Those, yeah. and, and the thing with Groupon is like, I think it's okay, um, especially in the beginning, you're trying to get like a kickstart um, it's like very equivalent to offering your services for free to get models to come in. So you have that content, right? Mm -hmm. I would just utilize Groupon to get that very kickstart if you really want to go down that road, route. But when you think about it, when people rely on that, you're essentially targeting the wrong clientele. I'm sure they want discounts it. all the time. Exactly. Like the, yeah. the looky loos, the, the window shoppers, they're never, you're never going to be able to upsell them on anything else. Um, yeah, it's, I'm not saying for all, but for most of them, it's going to be like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so for Groupon, and then I would say doing things like boosting Facebook and Instagram posts. Um, maybe we can talk about this in a little bit, but boosting posts, you're essentially just telling Facebook to cast this huge wide net and reach as many people as possible with really no objective. Right. So that's one as well. Um, anything that's like physical, so like flyers, money mailers, billboards, we see, we'll still see a lot to this day of people spending that sort of money. Mm -hmm. um, and 
yeah, I would say those are the top main things. And then we see this a lot too, just hiring like really inexperienced people. I yeah. call it outdated marketing tactic, but um, it's just very frustrating for us because a lot of people give the marketing name a very bad rep. So um, hiring inexperienced marketing people who don't really know what they're doing. Um, another thing is, I wouldn't say it's outdated, but it's focusing on the wrong things. For example, we see a lot of artists who are just starting out and they're like, you know what? I need to invest ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 into a good brand. I need like a crazy logo, like the world's best website. And it's like, well, you don't even have a client yet. Why are we right. focusing on that? We should focus all that time, energy and money on actually landing clients. Um, so I would say the main thing is just focusing on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. I can absolutely see that because regular people in the beauty industry do that all the time. Just thinking it's about the brand, the, the colors yeah. and yeah. all of that stuff. At what point in um, your clients' businesses do they, re they normally reach out to you? Is it in the beginning or when they start to feel like they're struggling with their, their sales and stuff? I, I would say both. So um, we have the High Stoke Academy, which is for the artists who are just starting out or any beauty pros for, for that matter. Like uh, it doesn't have to be PMU, but we show them how to run their own ads the right way. We show them how to create campaigns and things like that. And then once they're um, at a point where let's say they have a good amount of, I would say consistent clientele, they're charging, you know, above four or $500. Um, they have a good following, at least of a few thousand people. They have great portfolio pieces, great quality, consistent work, I should say. That's a huge yeah. thing. Um, and so some of those things, like we, we qualify prior to working with them. Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, you need, we need to be in a position where we're set up for success. Um, so if you don't have great content, if you don't have great portfolio pieces, it's very hard for us as a marketing partner to just come in and say, like, hey, here's this photo. Come in when it's mm -hmm. not the best that it could be. Right, right. So is this essentially like a funnel that you all are building for um, your clients? Yeah, great question. So we kind of do, it, it's like a whole thing. It, it is like a whole sales funnel, but we run everything from like the ads. I don't know, you can visualize this if you're what, listening to this in the podcast, but yeah, let, let's just think about it as like a funnel, right? At the top, we're attracting the right people. You know, we, we attract people who have the, the funds, higher affluent zip codes, your ideal demographics, age, gender, and things like that. And then we drive them to um, a mechanism where we can capture that data. So, you know, we collect their name, email, and phone number. So yeah, we build out funnels and things like that. And then once we have that, we do all the nurturing. Um, you know, we build that trust. I, I know we can probably talk about for like an hour on nurturing, but yeah. I see so many people not doing this. And if, if you're asking a question like, how do I stand out from my competition? Is for, for providing the best customer service and actually nurturing people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do all the nurturing, meaning we send them before and after photos. We send them FAQs and things like that. And then we help collect a deposit and then we actually book the appointment. So all the way from a stranger who has never heard of a Kuya before, all the way to, heck yeah, I'm so excited to see a Kuya tomorrow. Right, right. That whole process. I love that. How do you, um, I guess, make it unique for each individual client that you have, seeing as though they're, in the, they're doing the exact same thing? Oh, that's, it's, uh, these are great questions, by the way. Did you have these written down? This is- these That one I didn't have written down. <laughs> these, are, these are tough questions. Uh, it's a great question. The number one thing that we do is that we actually have an exclusivity policy, meaning we only work with one, uh, one artist or one beauty pro per city. And so if you are in DC and we work with you, you never have to worry about any competition stealing your clients using our system. You I love that. Are, our intent is to completely grow your business and scale you to the moon, building your beauty empire. That is the goal with every artist that we work with. Um, so you never have to worry about any competition. With mm -hmm. that said, one of the things that we really like to um, coach our clients to do is to be a lot more personalized with their branding. Um, mm -hmm. we, we see that a lot of people are very afraid to be the, the face of their business, but they are the business, which is kind of weird. It, it's, it's odd to me at first, right? Yeah. It's like, well, you're the, the face of your business and people buy from those that they know, like, and trust. And if you never show your face, no one's ever going to book with you because they don't know what you look like. Yeah. I wouldn't want to know what my plastic surgeon looks like, right? A lot of people so, are so introverted or just so, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, just taking like your phone out, like a simple phone, doing some selfie videos, selfie photos every once in a while, posting it. And it adds so much more of a personalized touch because I can guarantee you, right? It's like, if you go on LinkedIn and you look at every realtor, they look the exact same way yeah. it's the same like you know suit, suit and tie with like a clean background you know the hands crossed like this and then you go on I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought and then you, you go on a lot of these PMU artists and all you see are like before and after photos it's the same thing 
-hmm. So I would break that formality in a way and just how, how do you make yourself stand out? And it's by showing your face. Like mm -hmm. you are your brand, you are your personality. How do you present yourself in a way where people know, like, and trust you? And even if you're introverted, you know, things take time. Um, it's just the fact that you take action and do it every once in a while. That's going to make all the difference. So yeah, putting yourself out there and showing your face every once in a while, doing live streams, um, taking selfies with you and your client, yes. um, just small things like that. It definitely helps um, build that trust and really scale your business. I love that. Um, what was I going to ask you? Something about booking appointments with your clients. Do you all kind of work with them on like how many appointments they want to book per month? And does Absolutely. that kind of target like how you run their ads or how you push out the, the content to their um, their audience? Absolutely. So yeah, that's a fantastic question. So we essentially, we work with you and we figure out what your volume needs are. So for example, if you're saying like, hey, Danny, I am, um, I have a, a few new clients per week. I'm looking for an additional 20 to 30 per month. Mm -hmm. Then we would like kind of reverse engineer that and see exactly, um, you know, what that costs and things like that. And depending on what your volume needs are, that will determine how much we're spending on ads for you. Got you. Yep. On average, like how many clients, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, one of your clients in particular, how, how many clients are people typically getting um, per month from your system? Yeah, great question. So if they are like, a, let's just take like a very high end PMU artist who's charging about $800 in a very um, metro like city or populated city like San Francisco, right? Um, I would say on the low end, roughly 30 new appointments per month. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's so a 30, lot. 30 times like 20 to 30, depending on the area and like the situation and things like that. So Not quit makeup. I'm about to just start doing brows. Like you, you should. Well, you can always add it as an additional offering, right? You know, get people in for the brows, to get a very high ticket item, charge them six, seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I'll sell the makeup services. Right, right. Because I have my, one of my mother's friends specifically, every time she yeah. sees me, she's like, can, can you do something with my brows? Like, and I keep telling her to go to like get the ombre powder brows or microblading or something yeah. like that, but she won't listen to me. She wants me to try to fill them in. I'm like, I'm not doing all that. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I'll ask that. How do you avoid losing your client's money? Because I know with running ads, it's like trial and error sometimes, or have you all perfected your system so much that you don't, that's not a concern? Yeah, that's a, I think that's the first time I've ever been asked that. These are <laughs> a great question. How do we avoid losing our client's money? Well, the, the, the thing is, when people work with us, they're paying us an upfront amount anyways. And if any time we're unperforming, we just spend out of pocket money. So that's, that's one of the best things about working with us is that it's like an upfront cost and you never have to worry about paying anything extra unless you want to increase that volume. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't, and, and we've you know been in this game for so long now, we have a very good idea of like the numbers, the customer acquisition costs and things like that. So anything at the end of the day, we just spend more out of pocket money. Uh, so the client never has to worry about that. Um, and then I, I would just say, if you're also, because I want to give some value like to the audience too, like if you're running your own ads, I would just be very concerned with the numbers. Meaning if you're running ads, actually have a strategy behind it. Meaning what is your budget? What are you looking to acquire a customer at? And just really understanding those numbers so that you're not just throwing money into a fire pit, which we see happen a lot with beauty pros. Yeah, yeah. Do you all do like different? Because I I'm, I run my own ads from time to time. So do you all do uh, like how you can test out three different campaigns at the same time and then see which one is converting the best and then like cancel out the other ones type of Absolutely, thing? Absolutely, 100%. So the thing with ads is that you always have to test, right? And I think with, with business and life, you always have to split test and you never mm -hmm. want to assume what is going to work better. So for example, um, a test that we used to do so often is you know, one very casual image, like on an iPhone versus one professionally uh, taken photo, like on a very expensive camera. Right. The casual ones always perform better. It's mm. oddly enough because people feel like it's very relatable and it doesn't look like an ad. It's just shot with a very casual iPhone. Right. So you always want to split test because most people are going to naturally believe that the higher the quality the image is, the better it's going to convert when that's actually not true. But you never would have come to that conclusion unless you've actually split test things and figure out what the numbers are and things like that. Right, right. I know you you mentioned the academy as well. And you also have like the brow clients on demand, like plus program too, right? Yep. yep. When did you um, realize it was a need for that? Uh, which one? For both. So for the academy and for the the demand plus program. Browser oh, the demand. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
So the the plus program that was the, the actually so let the, me the, let me rewind a little bit. So we launched something called the Brow Clients on Demand without the plus program about three years ago, like right when we started, and we were doing well. And but like I said in the beginning, we were so focused on the marketing. Some clients were able to succeed, and some clients were failing miserably. We couldn't figure out why. And then over about a year ago, we we're like, okay, you know what? They're failing because of sales. Like we can generate you with leads and people calling you all day long. But if the artist lacks sales skills and be knowing how to close deals, they wouldn't be able to get the clientele that they are expecting. So mm -hmm. like, huh, let us go ahead and create this sales team, this concierge team that will actually come in and close these deals for you. And so we launched this brand new program called Route Clients on Demand Plus. So okay. not only do we do the marketing, we do the sales. And so after we launched that, we're getting a lot of people wanting to work with us. And we're like, well, we can't service you guys because not to sound mean, but you're just starting out it's very hard for us to succeed if you have, you know, 45 followers and four posts on your, on your Instagram. Right. And so like, let's help you get to the point where you need to be. So you are ready for our plus program. So we launched the high school Academy, which we're really positioning it as the number one beauty marketing school to help beauty professionals all around the world uh, grow and scale their business on their own to at least multiple six figures. I love that. I'm, I'm ready to scale the multiple six figures. Why not? Have to invest Ooh, let's do it. it. It's easier than you think it is, right? Because when you understand your numbers, it's, it's fairly easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If someone is in a position right now where they're struggling with their sales as a PMU, like mm -hmm. what is some advice you have for them? Take a sales training. <laughs> 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 I, I would say no no I'm um, like all, all jokes aside I would say like understanding because because here's the thing I do you get like a like weird feeling when you hear sales do you like oh like, I don't really do sales do you get that at all for yourself not anymore but it used to scare me because like especially like sales calls like having to call people I'm like yeah. oh my gosh yeah I just, like, I don't but not that. anymore because because here's the thing I think a lot of people avoid sales because maybe they 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 tie it to like a, a sleazy car dealership mm -hmm. uh, like a sleazy car but but the way that I look at sales is an opportunity for you to have an impact on somebody and if you fully believe in your service and the quality that you provide and you're mm -hmm. confident in that sales shouldn't be looked at with a negative connotation it should be like oh like this is the person who's interested I should do my very best to give them their dream appearance because it's going to naturally change their life Right. Yeah. And then it makes you feel so confident. And so I think the first thing that someone has to do is change their mentality of what sales actually is. Yeah. That, that's the very first thing. Um, the second thing is I, I do want to mention that you as a business owner and you as a CEO of your own company, there should be nobody that sells your business better than you. Because at the end of the day, if you can't even sell your own services, how do you expect anyone else to? That's right. that's the harsh truth, right? So that's the second thing. And the, the next thing is now it gets down to like the tactics, like understanding the frameworks of, of sales, because I truly believe, okay, um, and I've listened to like thousands of calls with our clients. The number one mistake that most beauty pros make is rushing the sale. And what I mean by that is if someone, if I, if I see, if, for example, if I go into one of my client's pages and someone DMs, I'm like, hey, Akria, like I'm interested. Can I get some more information? Mm -hmm. The first thing that that client's going to say is like, hey, our services are $600. Here's my deposit link. And it's like, whoa, I wasn't even sold on it yet. Like I was just wanted some more information. Yeah. So I think so many beauty pros are rushing the sale, which is causing them to lose the sale. And so my biggest piece of advice is just to take your time asking quality questions. Like, hey, like, I'm just curious, what motivated you to sign up or reach out? What interested you about this offer? You know, what styles do you like? What are you going after? Like, why are you looking to do this right here and now? Right. Uh, have you looked into doing this previously? Do you have any concerns? Awesome. Yeah, you, let, you know, so, so just kind of deep diving deeper and getting the other person much more emotionally invested to choose you as their beauty pro or their artist compared to their thousands of other options down the street. Mm -hmm. And just to address the, how do I stand up for my competition? I would say that customer service right there is going to be it. Because right. I can guarantee you if I message somebody, another PMU artist right now asking, can I get some more info? They're going to send me their deposit link without asking any questions about who I am, what I want to do and what I'm going after. Right. I love that. It's just that personal touch, just Absolutely. going to, like the extra mile, doing what most people don't and won't do. And that makes you stand out. Yeah. Here, here's actually a quick tip. It's it's not very scalable, but if you're just starting out, if someone is sending you a, a message like that on Instagram, take out your phone and respond with a video. Hey, Jenna, this is Aquia. Thanks for reaching out. I just wanted to personally record your video to answer that question. My, I guarantee you that client is going to convert. Definitely. That's an excellent advice. I love that. <laughs>
I love that. Yeah. And like I said, the word scale is like so big now because people are really not playing with their businesses anymore. Like people want to go yeah. and they want to go quick. So like, why do you think it's important to like restructure like your sales and your marketing strategy in order to like accelerate your growth? Like what has to change in order for you to scale? Great question. Um, I, I would say the number one thing, um, and, and we'll talk about the nitty gritty. Okay, we're, we're going to geek out now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the number one thing is understanding your numbers, like what your end goal is. It's actually a bit crazy in my mind how many um, entrepreneurs and business owners out there don't know what their end goal is. So for it's example, they want to make money. It's like, I just want to make money. Well, what does yeah. that look like? It's like, oh, I want to make six figures. Okay, well, how much? 100,000 or 900,000 or 500,000? Right. Exactly. Like, uh, I, I don't know. Well, how many clients does it need for you to get the number? Uh, I don't know. So if, if for everyone listening to this right now, the biggest piece of advice I can give is to understand what your next, not the end goal, but what your next goal is. Because if you understand that, it's very easy to reverse engineer exactly how long it takes to get there. I can give a quick, I can give two examples, okay? Um, so let's say you were wanting to make a six-figure salary. I think that's the, the magic number. Let's just say 120. $120,000 a year. Okay. Let's make it, let's keep it simple. So if you want to make $120,000 a year, that means you need to make $10,000 per month. That means you need to make, I'm trying to do the math in my head, $2,500 per week. And if you're working five days a week, that means you need to make $500 per day. Mm -hmm. And if you are, let's say doing PMU, that means you need to make, you need to do two clients a day. And so now you train your brain to like, okay, every single week I need 10 clients. What can I do this week to get there? And if I'm focusing on anything that's not getting me closer to that goal, I should not be doing it. Mm -hmm. I should not be focusing on investing $10,000 on a new booking system right now. I should reach out to my friends and family and Facebook groups and things like that, posting in my story, trying to get these clients. Mm -hmm. And then let's say you get to the next level of your business. Let's say you want to make a million dollars a year, yes. right? I, I just did this math with somebody else. So it's still fresh in my head. So a million dollars a year, that means you need to make $83,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That means you need to make $20,000 per week. That means you need to make about $4,000 per day. If you're working by yourself, there's absolutely no way you can make $4,000 a day providing all those services. So mm -hmm. what do you do? You hire a team. You leverage other people's time. Maybe they're on commission, 60, 40, 40, 60, which is very industry standard, where you have other artists and the more clients that they're getting, the more money that you're getting without using any more of your time. And then when you want to get to the next level, that's when you start talking about things like workshops and trainings and, and courses. And so just kind of bringing this all together, just fundamentally understanding what your end goal is, and then just reverse engineering exactly how much money you need to be making per day. And that will reshape your entire thought process so that you're not working just to work. Because I mm -hmm. think a lot of people are burning out because they're not clear on why they're working. Or what they're working towards right and i love i love um doing that i do that yeah. quite a bit when i have um business ideas and stuff like that i yeah. always like have my my large goal and then i break it down and i reverse engineer yeah. it so i absolutely love that advice because i don't think a lot of people do that a lot of yeah. people like like i said they just know that they want to make money and they don't have a clear plan on how to get to the money i guess so to yeah. say so I absolutely love that. When it comes to um, Facebook ads, I had this question. I forgot about it. When it no, comes no. to Facebook ads, like what is typically like the daily budget that you all are using to generate these leads? Oh, that's a great question. I would say if you're just starting out and you're between five to ten dollars a day, okay. it's fantastic. Now, you don't okay. need to spend anything crazy. If you're just starting out. We spend mm -hmm. obviously a lot more than that. But if you're just starting out and you're doing it yourself and you're in a financially tight spot, Five to ten dollars per day, and then you, you, I know we we're gonna get a lot of people like Danny, like I can't afford ten dollars a day, and but the but the way I like to look at it is if you're charging let's say five hundred dollars for your services, you can literally run at a ten dollar a day budget for the whole month. All you need to do is land at least one client to be profitable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I would say five to ten dollars a day would be like a good starting point. Good, good. And as far as people hiring for their teams to scale. Um, at a point where maybe they don't have the resources to pay them? Like, what are some resources that you know of that people can kind of find those people to put on their teams for the time being just to, you know, get there? So the, the question is, how, what resources can people, um, what resources can people utilize to pay for their team when they're not in a good financial spot? Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? 
Yeah. Okay. So, so the first thing is, if you're run, doing a commission-based um, agreement, you're never out of, you're not paying them anything. So if anything, the clients that they're generating, you're getting that 40% split. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you're, I know a lot of artists, they do like the whole rent model where the, the artist pays them, let's say 500 to a thousand to rent out a spot. You're also not out of any, any funds, right? So, so just structuring those agreements a little bit more cleverly, I, yeah. I guess. Um, and then also I am a huge, are you familiar with OPM by the way? OPM. It sounds familiar, but maybe not. Yeah. So it's, it's all the OPM. people's money. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> so other people's money. And I like to look at debt as a smart debt. I mean, you 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 have debt and then people, and if you buy like a $10,000 purse when you don't need it, that's not smart debt. But mm -hmm. if you're spending that $10,000 into your business to grow at a faster rate than what you have to pay it back for, that's smart debt. You're leveraging other people's money to grow your business faster. Right. Um, so if you're in the US, one of the best things that I actually... Um, coach some of our clients to do is to get 0% APR codes. So if, even if you have, let's say like not a great credit score and you need some like that cash injection, you can get like a credit card for like a $10,000 credit line at a 0% APR rate. And then you utilize that credit line to invest into ads or whatever it is. And you're paying back like a very low monthly minimum. And all you really need to do is land one or two clients per month to pay the back on that monthly minimum. Right, right. Oh, great advice. I've been trying to get into business credit and stuff too. Um, Cause I have a lot of stuff that I want to do, um, but I don't have a sugar daddy or anything like that. So you don't need one. You don't take you, some, you, some money, other people's uh, money. <laughs> uh, OPM, use the bank's money. Yes. Um, like who are the core members of your team right now? And what do they do? Like you have to shout them out since you're doing so well. Got it. Uh, so I want to shout out um, Caroline. She is our head of operations right now. I want to shout out um, Drew Morales, Samuel Amadovar, Jen Biasi. That's our amazing client advising and sales team. Um, I, I need to shout out everybody then, like all like 30 <laughs> members. Shout out to y'all <laughs> for doing this. I got to shout out to Audrey. I got to shout out to Juan, Derek, Carolina, Maria, Catherine, uh, Wendy, the entire BEC team. I got, yeah, much love to everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah, like everybody that, that's on the team, um, we just hired three more today. So wow. yeah, if you guys want to take a look at our team, they're, they're all on our website, which uh, has been pretty cool to see the list grow and grow and grow every day. That's so dope. Like what is, for you, what is like the culture that you're creating with your, your team members? Like how do you support them like outside of work? Like what does that look like? What is your all's relationship like? Do you have like holiday parties or I don't know, link up every now and then? Like what, is, what does oh, that's, that that's, look like for you and your team? That's a great question. Um, I think the number one thing that has really helped a lot is like this open doors policy. So we, you know, with most corporations and um, most corporations kind of have like this hierarchy, right? It's mm -hmm. like the CEO, you have the executives and then you have like the people on the bottom. So for us, like, even though we have like a structure in place and those who make exec executive decisions, we're really like a family. So like people aren't afraid to reach out to, to the CEO to joke around. And we kind of like, even though we're professional, we really look at the whole company as a family and we're all here to help each other grow. Um, and the crazy thing is, I think us being so global has really contributed to that. So we're in over eight countries right now. So we have like the Canada, we, the Canada, we have Canada, we have the US, we have Mexico, we have the DR, we have Colombia, um, we have like the Philippines, so we have India, so we're all over. And it's just amazing to see different cultures working with each other. Um, especially at the beginning, right? You kind of, if you're a new team member, you come in you're like, whoa, there's so many new cultures. Like, how do I adapt? And the the willingness to adapt and work with each other, it just allows us to bond so much more as a team. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing that I would say is, um, you know, for you as like a CEO to really understand the dreams and the whys of your team members. I know it's very corny, but, you know, we don't want our team members to look at this as a job. We want them to look at this at, as this, a stepping stone to help them get to where they want to be in life and mm -hmm. even even small things right for example we had one um, team member out in asia and they were like oh you know my, my dream is to get a, a macbook pro i never had a macbook pro before because i couldn't afford one so we sent them a macbook pro and now they're probably going to stay with us forever <laughs> <laughs> so just really understanding them outside of work and why they're showing up every day it really helps that too and it, for you as like the ceo and the leader of your business to be 
um, that listening ear and to connect with them, they're going to feel so much more emotionally invested into the company. I love that. Oh, you're such a boss. I love it. <laughs> Are there any challenges that you, um, that you have right now that you didn't have like in the beginning with running the business? Absolutely. I, I would say operationally. So with um, 30 team members now, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of things like accountability. There's like, who's responsible for what? What am I doing? Who do I listen to? And mm -hmm. so the larger that the team grows, I would say the, the huge problems happen internally. So I would say that that's really the only thing. And as we're scaling our client base too, it's like, do we actually have the, uh, the support on our team to support all of the new clientele that's coming in? So yeah. for example, if we were to, uh, like, we just had a conference and we landed like 10 plus clients all in one day. The team was like, whoa, like, how do we onboard them all at the same time? Yeah. Right. So it's just small things like that when it comes to volume and operations. Yeah. Speaking of the but, conference, because I was going to ask you about that again, like, what did that look like for, for your company? Did you all have like your own table or something for people to sign up after you blew them away with your speech? I, I hope I did. We, we got really good feedback. So it's, it's a funny story because it's a very like bougie conference, right? It's the Vegas PMU conference. Is it in, have you been to Vegas before? Never. Okay. So, so it's at a, um, at a hotel called the Cosmopolitan. Okay. And it's like one of the bougier hotels. It has like chandeliers. looks like you're like a Disney movie and, and things like that. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? And the, the intent was we had a booth. Let's just get a table and a nice like cloth with our logo on it. And then the team comes in and is like, well, Danny, I think this is like a very bougie conference. We should have a very bougie booth. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. But <laughs> go for it, design it, and then, and then bring it up to me. And they were like, well, Danny, what's the budget? I'm like, you know, there's oh. no budget. There's no budget, but, you know, keep it reasonable. What a booth. So, so they design everything. It looks amazing. And they slap me with the invoice. And it's like 20 something thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm like, guys, we, we can't spend 20 something thousand dollars for a booth. Uh, but we ended up doing it anyways because we saw the ROI on that. And we're like, we're probably going to get a lot of clients when you work with us. Um, and yeah, we had this amazing booth. We had like a spin the wheel thing with a light that said like beauty boss. People came in, Instagrammed us, and we were pretty much like the sensation of the exhibitor room. Um, yeah. I, I can try to show you a picture later or yeah. as you're asking the next question, I'll try to pull it up. But yeah. it's uh, it, was, it was really fun. I love your um, social media too. I, I peep that you all social media page. And I, what I love about it is like so um, educational, so informative, and it's also yeah. fun too. Absolutely love that. Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you can see this. Oh, the people on the podcast can't see this, but it's literally like this booth with like a spin the oh, wheel, like that's this dope. wall and all these like sofas and tv and gifts and wrap that is super cute if you're if you're listening to this you definitely have to watch on youtube to see how the the booth look. i've never even seen anything that looked like that so or on our looks, instagram in yeah our, go on the instagram <laughs> it looks very interactive it looks like i will be throwing my my wallet at you after <laughs> afterwards just to sign Yo, up for whatever well, you're selling well, well here's here's the thing after i was like okay i just pulled the trigger on like 20 something thousand dollars all the swag the team's like Danny, we should have a, a, a giveaway. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, we'll, we'll buy something nice. And then they came up like, let's buy a YSL bag. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up spending another $2,000 on a bag that was like a raffle giveaway. And so that also attracted a lot of people to our booth. Like we have this in this nice glass case that kind of um, reflected the light from all over. So it kind of blew up. It was this mm -hmm. nice fuchsia color. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a fun time. And I believe we're speaking again next year. So if you guys are listening to this, definitely show some mm -hmm. love and come out. And you're like a partner with the conference now? Uh, we actually do the marketing. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if they wanted me to say that, but I said it anyway. We actually do the marketing now. So we, we help them sell out their tickets this year. That is dope. <laughs> That's dope. I absolutely love it. Danny, what is your like work-life balance like? Do you have like self-care time for yourself? Do you have a family? Like what does your life look like? That is a fantastic question. So I do, I live with my girlfriend right now. We just moved to Vegas recently, like I mentioned. So uh, my work-life balance. So he, here's the thing, um, you know, I, I really, I enjoy what I do. I love it so much. And I think a lot of people look, it's like, oh, like Danny, like you're just working all day. And the way that I like to look at what I'm doing is not work-life balance, but work-life integration. So how do I integrate my personal life to what I am doing on a daily basis so that, you know, 
I, I can essentially, I guess, work from anywhere, have the flexibility to do what I want. It's not a clock in, clock out mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the first thing I do want to mention. It's really like work-life integration um, so that I can take a vacation whenever I want. I can just, hey, tomorrow, guy, team, I'm really tired. Wednesday, my family's in town. I'm going to take today off and I'm going to hang out with them and go have a drink or two. So yeah. the work-life integration, that brought that concept has helped so much. And then um, in terms of like what my day-to-day looks like, um, I used to be the worst early, I used to be the, 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 the worst night owl. And I had to really force myself to be an early bird over the past two to three years. So I wake up around 6.30 every day, have like a morning routine, you know, work out, meditate, uh, journal, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, try to get so much done before like noon or 1 p.m. I really enjoy seeing like people just get up starting their day. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of done with my day already. That is so me. <laughs> Are you an early bird too? I am. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah, you just get so much done. You feel so accomplished right before the sun comes up. And by, by lunchtime, you're like, well, I sort of finished more than half of my day. I guess I can just kind of relax now. Um, and then what I also like to do is, you know, on, on the weekends, you know, picking up like a hobby, doing things outside of work. So mm-hmm. it's doing like, like one of the, the, the newest hobbies that uh, my girlfriend and I started doing is just finding something that's completely random on Groupon and having like a date night doing that. Okay. So the other day, like we did like archery. It was super random, but it was so fun. When you said activity on the weekend, I was literally like archery. archery. That's so crazy that you said that. <laughs> so, so just doing things like that. And, you know, we live in Vegas. And so we're, we're always trying out new restaurants and new, new places to eat. Um, and then, you know, one of my favorite things to do is like traveling, you know, traveling the world, going to different states, different cities, different countries around, and just kind of experiencing something new every now and then. Awesome. Awesome. Um, well, what are you working on your legacy to be when this is all said and done? Oh, that's a fantastic question. So I would say with High School Media, our mission, and we've ingrained this across every team member, it's to be the number one luxury beauty growth network in the world. So what that means is we want to expand so much more out of just like the marketing and advertising. Like we want to create our, our own products. We want to create our own academy. We want to create our own licenses. Um, we, we're even looking to like the franchise model. No one has heard, heard, heard of these things before, but just really being like the go-to like household name for mm-hmm. all things beauty and PMU. So yeah. we're looking to do that. Um, and then in terms of like personal legacy, I definitely want to like speak on stage more, spread the message, spread the impact to so many people. Um, and just being able to do these things very recently has been such a such an honor and I'm so grateful for it. Absolutely. You have anything that's coming up next, like really soon? Uh, anything that's coming up really soon? Bus- business or personal? Yeah, business-wise. Business-wise? Um, I can't say anything, but because of the conference, we 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 established like four really game-changing partnerships good and so if you guys are following us please follow us on social media 2022 is going to be such an amazing year for all of us that's dope <laughs> congratulations if Thank people you. want to get access to um the course they could just go on the website and everything yeah yeah so just go to highstokemedia.com all the links that you want to um, access should be on there and we're always um like you said okay like we're pretty um, we go pretty heavy on the social media side of things. Yeah. And so follow us, we're posting pretty much every single day. And we try to, you know, tell stories and show the behind the scenes and make it a little bit more fun. So highstuffmedia.com yeah, for anything, even if you want to schedule a call to talk to our team to see what we could potentially do. Um, mm-hmm. Everything's on the website. Cool. Do you all have affiliates? We can. <laughs> We can let's, let's, let's talk, talk about it. After this, if you guys are if you guys are signing up there, we have, use her link that we were going to create for her after the show. Yes, do that, and in the future. In the future too. Yeah. So thank Danny. Thank you so much for sharing with us. This has been like such a informative, educational, amazing interview that I know for sure I'm going to go back and listen to to catch the little gems that you were dropping because I was listening that you was dropping them. So I hope that they caught them too. Um, But before you go, I have to ask you the rapid fire questions. The Friends and Beauty rapid fire questions. A lot of pressure. I get anxiety when I hear rapid fire questions. You got this. You got this. Whatever comes to your mind first, just spit it out. Okay, go. (laughs) First one is, what are the top three keys to your success so far? Top three keys to the success so far. I'm like I mentioned, team, systems, and understanding your numbers. Awesome. How do you measure your success? The numbers. 
<laughs> no, 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 okay, I mean, it was rapid fire, but really, it's just understanding what our numbers are next year, and we have to hit it. That's really how we measure it. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice that you've ever received? The best advice that I have ever received. Oh, man, there's so many. I would say the one that I mentioned in the beginning, I know that's kind of a cop out, but I live with that mentality to this day. And it's to really, and excuse my friendship, like it's just to not give a shit about what other people think and to mm -hmm. live life on your own terms, stay in your lane, focus on you, nothing else matters. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what advice would you give to a PMU, I guess, that is just ready to throw in the towel and just give up on their business aside from, you know, higher high stuff media, of course, <laughs> but <laughs> what advice would you give to them? The only way that you fail is if you give up. Because if you are consistent every single day, day in and day out, even if it takes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, it is impossible to fail if you don't give up. And as cheesy as that sounds, it's just so true. You know, mm -hmm. over the past four or five years of high stuff media, we almost threw in the towel like five times. And the most recent one being COVID and the pandemic and things like that. But we were just consistent with it because what is going to allow you to stand out is like the grit and the consistency and putting in the work when nobody else is willing to. Mm -hmm. um and just taking action on all of the things that you are learning so consistency wins the only way that you fail is if you just give up awesome um is there a resource or what is a resource that you can share with the friends and beauty community that has helped you in your business or that you think would be like really helpful that they oh, should this, look into this is fantastic because there's nothing that's really good in the PMU industry right <laughs> this we're actually launching a free ebook that we're, that, that's going to come out like the next week or two. So follow us on social media. I know that was probably a cop out answer too, but <laughs> um, that is going to be an, an amazing um, resource because it's, it talks about everything we learned today. Um, and then I would say another resource, one of my favorite books in the world that has allowed me to um, grow the business, it, it's, it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. I love that book. You like you like that book? Yeah. It's, it's just... Um, because the I actually believe that your business is a direct reflection of you. And so the more that you grow personally, the more that your business is able to grow too. So the more that you're willing to speak to people, the more that you're willing to get into sales and marketing and talking and communication, the more that your business is going to grow naturally. Yeah, that's a great book. I had to go back and read it again. But when I read it the first time, it was, I was like, okay, I could do this. I kind of, I resonated with a lot of the things that were in there. Super Absolutely. cool. So the last one, I just want you to fill in the blank and say, my name is blank. And the key to longevity and success is whatever you think it is. Um, my name is Danny Tran. And the key to longevity and success is happiness. As cheesy as that sounds, because if you're waking up every day and you're hating what you do, what's the point of doing it? Mm -hmm. And the only reason why we're still able to do what we do every single day is because we were, we wake up, we're super fired, we're on this mission, we have a goal, we, we were streamlined like as a team, we know exactly where we're going and we will absolutely love what we're doing every day. It's the reason why we're able to put in the 14, 16 hour days. It's the reason why we can work on weekends. It's the reason why we can ha you know experience and go through all these challenges and struggles and still get to where we are today. Absolutely. And what will you do? Yes. Oh my gosh. So before you go, share all of your social media information where people could learn more about High Stoke Media, your academy, and just follow the journey. Love it. So thank you for allowing us to have this plug, Queer. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, follow us on, on all of our socials. It's at High Stoke Media. So H I G H S T O K E M E D I A. So that is our consistent socials all around. If anyone wants to follow me personally, um, it is at Danny to Tran, so D A N N Y T U T R A N, and we'd love to connect with you guys. Um, awesome. Yeah, everything is on our website too, highspokemedia.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danny. Absolutely. Thank you, Kriya. Pleasure being here. Thanks for listening to the Friends in Beauty podcast. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this episode with at least one friend in beauty and subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts so that other friends in beauty can find this show. Plus, we'd love to hear your feedback. Connect with us on all social media platforms at Friends in Beauty, hashtag Friends in Beauty to join the conversation and join our Friends in Beauty Facebook community to stay connected. Talk to you soon.